Hi everyone, this video is on current camera wires and solenoids. By way of review, an electric current is defined as charges passing through a certain point in a conductor over time. To calculate current, we'll divide the charge in coulombs by the time in seconds. Moving charges, such as those in a current, will also produce their own magnetic field. So we can say that an electric current produces a magnetic field. This relationship between charges, current, and magnetic field was discovered when a compass was placed next to an electric circuit. When the switch was closed, allowing the current to pass through the circuit, it affected the orientation of the compass needle, which we discussed was magnetic in property. In a straight current-current conductor, such as a rod or a straight wire, the magnetic field that's produced by the current or moving charges through the conductor is circular and goes around the conductor as you can see in the diagram. The direction of this magnetic field in relation to the current is determined by using an important rule called the right hand grip rule or simply known as a right hand rule. This is where we point our thumb in the same direction as the conventional current that runs through the conductor or the wire and we'll grip our fingers into a fist form such that the fingers will curl around the straight conductor to represent the direction of the circular magnetic field. In this diagram, you can see the person's thumb is pointing upwards in the same direction as a conventional current, and the fingers will curl around the conductor in the same direction as the circular magnetic field. The magnitude of this magnetic field due to the current in the conductor is given by the following formula. B, which is the magnetic field strength, expressed in teslas or T, is equal to mu naught. This is the magnetic permeability constant of free space. This number is found in the NASA physics data sheet. Here I have it as 4 pi times by 10 to the power 7. Mu naught multiplied by current in amps divided by 2 pi r, where r is the radial distance that you're measuring the magnetic field strength away from the current carrying wire in meters. This formula for magnetic field strength tells us the magnetic field is directly proportional to the magnitude of current that flows through it. So if a larger current flows through a conductor, it will produce a stronger magnetic field. The field strength is also inversely proportional to R, the radial distance away from the conductor. This can be demonstrated in the second diagram. As you move away from the current current conductor, the density of the field lines decreases, suggesting a decrease in the field strength. The magnitude and direction of this field can be also understood and visualized by taking another perspective. Here I have two straight wires, one where the current is running out the page. Remember that we can use dots to represent any vectors that come out of the page or the screen towards us. In this diagram on the right hand side, I have a current running into the page or into the screen through the conductor. In both cases, we can use a right hand grip rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field. In the first instance on the left, we should point our thumb out of the screen and hold our right hand in a fist form. This way, the direction that our fingers will curl will be the direction of the magnetic field. And we can see that this field will run in the anti-clockwise direction. In the example on the right hand side, we have to point our thumb into the screen in the direction of the conventional current. And when we curl our fingers to form a fist, it will run in a clockwise direction, indicating that's the direction of the magnetic field. Calculate the magnetic field strength 5 centimeters from a straight wire carrying a current that's 2.5 amps in magnitude. So the magnetic field strength is equal to mu naught times by the current divided by 2 pi r. Mu naught is the magnetic permeability constant. This is given in the data sheet 4 pi times by 10 to the minus 7 and we'll times this by 2.5 amps or divided by 2 pi times by the distance. So here we have to use the SI units of meters, 0 0.05 meters. The pi and pi will cancel out and the 4 and the 2 will simplify so that we have 2 times by 10 to the minus 7 in the numerator. So this simplifies to 2 times by 10 to the power of minus 7 times by 2.5 amps of current divided by 0 0.05 meters of distance. This gives the answer of 1.0 times 10 to minus 5 teslas, or T for short. Solenoids are a common component you'll come across in electromagnetism. They consist of wires 
are coiled into circular turns, as you can see in the top diagram here. These coils of wire are then connected to a battery to provide a voltage or potential difference. Then this battery will cause the current to run through the multiple turns of coiled wire. This is what we call a solenoid. As we previously discussed, moving charges or electric current will produce its own magnetic field. The current that runs through the coils of wire will produce the magnetic field present inside the coils of wire or inside the solenoid as well as external to it, as you can see by the bottom diagram here. The magnitude of this magnetic field is given by the formula B equals to mu naught. again this is the permeability constant, times by N. N is the number of coil turns. So the number of times the coil makes a circle, that's one turn. Multiplied by the current going through the solenoid, then divided by the length of the solenoid. The length L is measured from one end where the coils start to where it ends. That's the length of the solenoid. Similar to determining the magnetic field direction in a straight current carrying conductor, we also use a right hand rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field for solenoids. But we use this rule slightly differently. When we use our right hand, our fingers when curled into the fist form will be the direction of the conventional current that run through the circular coiled wires. Our thumb in this case will be the direction of the magnetic field that goes through the inside of the solenoid. And this is directed from the south pole to the north pole of the magnetic field. In this diagram, we can see that the person is curling the fingers in the same direction as the conventional current running through the cord wires. And when we point our right thumb in the right hand rule, this is always pointing towards the north pole of the magnetic field. This is because the field lines inside the solenoid are always directed from the south pole towards the north pole. Although the field lines are directed from the south pole to the north pole in the solenoid, when they exit exterior to the solenoid, they always go from the north pole back to the south pole. Remember that for the magnetic field lines, they're always from a closed loop. As I emphasized earlier, although the right hand rule is used to determine the direction of the magnetic field for both straight current carrying conductors and solenoids, they are used differently. In straight current carrying conductors, we use our thumb to represent the direction of the conventional current, and our right fingers will be curled in the direction of the radial circular magnetic field. In contrast, in a solenoid, our thumb represents the direction of the magnetic field lines inside the solenoid, and this is always going from south pole to the north pole. Our fingers, when curled in this manner, will represent the direction of the conventional current that run through the circular coils of the solenoid. So we already mentioned that solenoids consist of multiple turns of cord wire. What you will also see very commonly in solenoids is the presence of a ferromagnetic core that's inserted into the cord wires. So here we have blue cord wires connect to a potential difference and we have a cylindrical core of iron which is ferromagnetic inserted through it. What the ferromagnetic core does is it becomes magnetized as a result of the magnetic field produced by the current in the solenoid. Once it's magnetized the ferromagnetic material such as the iron core will produce its own magnetic field. So this further increases the magnetic field strength of the solenoid because now you have the magnetic field produced by the current in the solenoid, as well as the magnetized ferromagnetic core. In this diagram, you can see the direction and orientation of the field does not change after the insertion of the iron core, but what does change is the density of the field lines produced by the solenoid has greatly increased, suggesting an increase in the field strength. Solenoids are an important part of electromagnetism because the orientation of the field produced by the solenoid mimics that of a permanent magnet. In a permanent magnet, we can see that the radial lines will run from north to the south pole forming a closed loop, and we see this similarly in the magnetic field produced by the solenoid. The field lines will go from north to south pole forming a closed loop. This is why solenoids are usually referred to as electromagnets. The magnetic field produced by solenoids can be easily adjusted by changing the magnitude of current that's passing through the cord wire. If we want to increase the strength of an electromagnet, that is a solenoid, we simply need to increase the magnitude of current passing through it. 
A solenoid is wound with a thousand turns per meter. So this is your N divided by L turns per meter. The current in the solenoid is 20 amps. So this is my I. What is the maximum magnetic field inside the solenoid measured in millitesla's? So for a solenoid, the magnetic field strength is given by mu times by N times by I divided by L. Mu is 4 pi times by 10 to minus 7. And we already clarified that N over L, which is the number of turns per meter or per unit length, is equal to 1000. So we times this by 1000. And then we times by the magnitude of current, which is 20 amps. This gives a magnetic field strength of 0.025 Tesla. To convert this into millitesla, we need to remind ourselves that to go from Tesla to millitesla, we have to times by 1000. So we'll times this number here by 1000 and we'll get an answer of 25 millitesla. This concludes the video on carrying carrying wires and solenoids. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.